On March 3, 2012 in Richmond, Virginia, the follicles of the James Stash and Beard League hosted the first ever Mid-Atlantic Beard and Stash competition. It was a great event, but it was even more significant on a personal level. That's me in the foreground in profile. It may be hard to believe it looking at this picture, but I'm well on my way here to winning the evening's longest beard prize. And even more than that, I'm grateful that this photo exists because it captures the precise moment that proved to me why the world of competitive facial hair is so special. But more on all that later. First, a bit of background. I've been going to facial hair competitions since the 2010 Nationals in Bend, Oregon, and over the last six months have begun recording and making videos of various events. When assembling these videos, I've always been a bit frustrated at competitors who don't work the crowd at all, but rather just barely glance out at the audience before running from center stage. Facial hair competitions are pageants. I would think that each competitor would relish his or her moment in the spotlight. But of course, that's very easy for me to say. I've never actually competed in a facial hair event. And I know that standing to the side and taping the proceedings is quite different from strutting out on stage in front of a crowd several hundred strong. So it seemed only right for me finally to get up on stage and see for myself what it's like to parade in front of an audience and be judged on the quality of my facial hair. Having decided to throw my beard in the ring, Richmond was the perfect place to make my competitive debut. It wasn't going to be as large as some other competitions, so the intimidation factor was a bit lower. Plus, it was a brand new event. It seemed fitting to compete for the first time at an event that itself was just starting out. So I made the 10-hour trip from Connecticut to Richmond, knowing that my beard had no chance of winning, or even placing, but hoping at least to be reasonably polished on stage. The folks in the Richmond League actually planned a number of events for the weekend, which were great not only for catching up with old friends, but also for meeting new ones. For example, at one party before the competition, I met Eric Brooks, seen here on the left. I told Eric that I was nervous about competing for the first time the next day, and he told me about his first time competing, which turned out to be only three months earlier at the 2011 New York City Beard Competition. The first experience I had, I actually went there by myself in Brooklyn, so um, I kind of didn't know what to expect. I was walking around by myself, kind of exploring. I met up with like Vic and all the guys from the um, New Jersey Beard and Mustache, and um, they welcomed we, me with open arms as like one of the first uh, first places hanging out with bearded guys. It was one of the most ex fun experiences I've ever had. Eric immediately immersed himself into the wider world of competitive facial hair. He spent several weeks drawing and perfecting this picture of a bearded face, which he donated free of charge to the Richmond League for use in the official competition poster. And he was justifiably proud of how that final poster came out. I also spoke with some of the members of the Richmond League about the logistics of hosting a first-time facial hair competition. As explained by League member Travis Oliver, it was actually easy to get sponsors. We kind of just reached out to people that were part of the beard community, part of, you know, businesses that were part of the beard community, um, and local businesses, and it, it was really easy. Uh, people were excited about the event, people were, you know, looking forward to it, so it, it really wasn't much of an issue whatsoever. People were, were willing to jump on board. And as explained by League President Chad Roberts, seen here on the left, the sponsors covered just about everything. The sponsors took care of most of the stuff. The man who did the trophies is actually Travis's girlfriend's brother-in-law. And then the, the printing was also done by a printing company. A lot of it's kind of um, who you know and kind of networking around town. Even the venue was content just to take a cut of the door. In fact, as explained by event host and league member Stephen Brown, the league quickly found that it had to turn away cash sponsorships. We tried to only take a certain amount of paid sponsors, and we were going to cut it off like after we had made like 800 bucks in paid sponsors, and we were done with that like within a week. And then people, we actually had to turn away and say, no, we don't want your money. Other than getting sponsorships, the biggest job was promotion. I mean, we would just spend like weeks just every day just going to a different part of town, hanging up posters, just talking to people, uh, going to the college campuses, hanging out business cards, just, uh, just to get people knowing that we're a club and that we're having a competition coming up. And it turned out that much of that promotion wasn't even necessary. This is Strange Matter, the venue for the event. It's a fairly big club, and it completely sold out. The club held a few tickets back from pre-sales to sell out the door, and those quickly disappeared as well. In the end, over 100 people were turned away, as Chad Roberts later told me that even included the local media. It turns out that some of the local TV stations and newspapers had come by, but they didn't buy a ticket, so they couldn't get in. <laughs> as the doors opened to the venue, I was getting more and more nervous about my upcoming moment on stage. I wondered if the other first-time competitors were feeling the same way. A little nervous. 
Uh, I'm a little scared. I'm looking around at some of the competition here, and I don't think I have much of a chance, but it should be fun. Eh, a little nervous, but not too bad. I am nervous after seeing the rest of the competition. I've always been the biggest mustache around, uh, but now seeing all these other genetic monstrosities, I am cowed and humbled. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited because it's different. I've done a lot of different things in the comedy business, so uh, from poetry readings to performing on buses and... Uh, this is my first one, so it's a little bit in, uh, intimidating for sure. Uh, lots of guys here with awesome facial hair. Usually uh, you don't see many. I don't really like crowds too much, like big, loud crowds. I'm going to be up there, but I'm sure by the time I get up there, I'll, I'll be calmed down enough that it'll be all right. Uh, I'm what you could say a bit of an extrovert, so uh, I'm actually uh, looking forward to it. I also asked some of the veteran competitors about their first times on stage. I was very nervous on stage. Um, I didn't know really what to wear. It was cool. It was fun. I, I was in a very um, heavy, heavy uh, group in my category. I, you know, it was my first beard competition. They had about three or four different heats in each category. My heat, I'm standing next to Neil Mockerman, Mike O'Connor, and Brian Nelson. So it's my first time at a beard competition. My beard is nothing it's still nothing as impressive as you know those guys. And I'm looking to my right, and I'm like, well, what have I gotten myself into? It was very exciting. I got to meet a lot of people. And uh, was I nervous? Yes, I was. Being on that stage with all those great beards and all. But uh, I got through it. Man, I was so nervous. <laughs> I walked up there, and I, in my head, I was going to be like super showmanship and everything. And I walked up on stage, pretty much walked right to the crowd, walked right to the judges, and then it was it was just over. It was a good time. It was my first time. I just you go up there. It's you know it's a beard. You don't really have to do much. You just kind of hey, hang out, and then you know that's about it. I always get nervous when I get on stage. <laughs> it's just you know I'm not a very outgoing, hey look at me kind of person. So it was um, it was kind of a um, you know it wasn't I wanted to get up there. You're like ah this is cool. So the first time I competed was in Ohio. Um, and it was in this big convention center, you know, museum, and it was really, it was scary. And I'm not one who likes to get on, up on stage and talk. Oh, that was kind of fun. You know, I do, uh, I do some stand-up comedy, I do some magic, so I've been used to being on stage. So this is just another a avenue for me to get up on stage. It actually was very relaxing. I had no problem with it. It was a great time. Um, went late into the night and, you know, got there early just like I got here early and uh, just made a lot of friends. And uh, my first experience was at our Beertoberfest 2011 in October where I came in second place and I had a great time. I had no nervous qualms. Uh, I basically performed and pitched the crowd and the judges and had a blast. The first time was actually rather, like it was exhilarating and intimidating and scary and awesome. Like it was, it was one of the best experiences I've had in my life. None of this really alleviated my nerves, but I took to heart what Jared said about the support he got from his fellow competitors. For me, uh, the camaraderie, um, the, uh, the subculture, the people in the community, um, that's what really surprised me the most. I really didn't expect um, the, 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 the type of kinship that I, that I experienced. Um, everybody was so supportive. Everyone... Uh, really helped you, um, you know, knowing that it was my first time. Uh, people helped me, you know, uh, groom, groom the beard, get me uh, ready to go on stage, give me a few uh, pointers on uh, stage etiquette and uh, how to address the crowd. Um, just, uh, you know, just things to help me um, feel more comfortable, which everything did. And everybody that I met um, really made the experience uh, terrific. Finally, it was time for the main event. Welcome to the first ever Mid-Atlantic Beard and Stash competition. There were nine categories up for grabs this evening, and, just my luck, I was entered in the biggest one of all, Full Beard Groomed, with 27 registered competitors. The other eight categories varied greatly in size, from as few as three competitors in partial beard styled and full beard styled, to as many as 21 in full beard natural.
then there was the biggest category of all, my category, full beard groomed. My moment was rapidly approaching. Let's get this started. At last, it was my turn. I'd arranged to go last in my category so I'd be able to video the other competitors. Unfortunately, I neglected to get anyone to take the camera and video me, so I carried my camera on stage while also doing my best to pose for the audience. Happily, Charles Gibbs of CBG Photography was there to capture the moment. But notice my red face, unfocused eyes, and generally disheveled appearance. At least in this case, appearances don't lie. I was completely discombobulated. I couldn't see the audience at all, I couldn't focus on anything going on around me. I didn't know what to do with myself, where to put my hands, where to look. Worst of all, I felt paralyzed. 
Had I been on stage too long already, or not long enough? And that's when Eric, who I had just met the night before, came and put his arm around my shoulders. To be honest, I had no idea at the time who it was. I actually wouldn't find out until days later when I saw this photo. On stage, all I knew was that someone had come over to lend his support. And this small gesture meant a great deal to me. I suddenly felt relaxed. I realized that this is why I attend these competitions, for the camaraderie and kinship, and not to impress some random audience members or judges. And once I recognized that fact, my paralysis was gone. But personal epiphanies aside, this was still a competition, and it was time to hand out the awards for the evening. At the end of the evening, it was time for the audience to vote on Best in Show. Each category winner paraded in front of the audience one last time, with the Best in Show determined by who received the loudest applause. And the audience favorite was clear. Give it up for Mr. Grizzly Stonewall Jackson! Actually, there was one final prize for the evening, the Longest Beard Prize, won by me. Now, of course, this prize had nothing to do with the actual length of my beard, but rather was based on the fact that I traveled the longest distance of any competitor to be at the event. But hey, it sounds impressive to anyone who doesn't know any better, and I received a really nice prize package of Richmond memorabilia, so I'm certainly not complaining. And so the competition came to a close. Personally, I may or may not compete again, but even if I don't, I know that I'm going to keep going to facial hair competitions, because for me, 
and I think for most people in the community. The main point isn't who wins or loses, but just to see all of our old friends and make new ones. But I don't think I can express this any better than did Zach Petrie of the Richmond League, who sought me out to give his thoughts about the night's events, so I'll let him have the final word. This is the first time in four competitions that I've placed lower than first place, so I'm very epically humbled. Um, Kevin Faison crushed me, um, but the good news is that I'm still here. I'm still rocking a beard. I'm still rocking a sweet mustache. I'm having fun. I've met a lot of people that I've been friends on Facebook with for a long time, but I've never met. So the uh, come to fruition of meeting people and having fun and sharing beer and sharing a good time it's, makes it all worth it. No, I wasn't nervous. I mean, alcohol had a lot to do with that. I was nervous, to be honest. Uh, I was actually trying very hard not to wet myself. I actually bumped into some of the members over at uh, City Dogs and, uh, and all the posters I've seen around town. I had to come out to see the mustaches. <laughs>